Good morning everyone. Magbasa na tayo ng ating libro guys. Kapwa ko Pilipino, magbasa na tayo ng ating history. History of the Filipino People by Agoncillo and Guerrero. Today is 18 January 2023. Ang ating babasahin ay 8th edition pa rin. Part 4, Topic 15. Part 4, The American Period. Topic 15, The Continuing Resistance. Nandito na tayo sa... Literacy guys, the Solo Resistance, 1899 to 1913. Basa. Literacy, the Solo Resistance, 1899 to 1913. Number one, the Baptist Treaty, 1899. After the cession of the Philippines by Spear to the United States in Spain, In 1898, the Muslims, like the rest of the Filipinos, had remained unreconciled, unreconciled to colonial rule. The serious conflict between Sulu and Spain in late 19, 19th century had not, had not resulted in the weakening of Muslim will to remain free. But the United States was determined to enforce its so-called sovereignty over all of Moro land. The problem was how to contain for a while Muslim resistance while American forces were busy eliminating the Filipino obstacle in Luzon and the Visayas. Thus, the Betis Treaty was concluded with the Sulu Sultanate, the first such formal agreement entered into by the United States with the Muslims. As already intimidated, I sorry, as already intimated, the American government intimated yan guys ha? as already intimated, the American government had no intention of recognizing Muslim sovereignty in Moro, in Moro land. The Muslims were aware of this American design. That is why the Baptist Treaty who opposed the Sultan. That is why the Baptist only tengo guys Mali eh. Lumak to ako. That is why the Baptist Treaty was not binding on those who continued to resist, especially those who opposed the Sultan. There was Dato Jilkanain and Dato Kalvi, Kalvi of Patikol who refused to join the Sultan. Then, Panglima Hassan defied American truth when he showed non-compliance with American demand of at least Nominal recognition. The Hassan uprising disrupted the stability of the Moro province rule in Sulu. The Americans used the rebellion to discredit the Sultanate and to abrogate the Baptist Treaty. What followed was American relentless campaign against Panglima Hassan from 1903 to 1905, involving no less than the personal participation of Governor Leonard Wood, veteran general and commander of the Rough Rider in the Cuban War. Number 2. Panglima Hassan, 1903. Wood's campaign against Hassan included a secret landing to see it, walking unnoticed through jungles and swamps before the troops finally cornered Hassan and his followers. Hassan was captured by Colonel Hug his scout and was to be taken to Hulu for in, 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 incarceration when the wily Hassan deceived Scott into stopping at one of Hassan's hideouts supposedly to pick up Hassan's wife. Hassan escaped at the first chance and eluded attempts to give him dead or alive for some time the Hassan problem remained for as long as the Panglima was at large. Governor Wood used every possible contact including the Sultan and Dato to stall to the fugitives. The patient intelligence work by Moro informers finally brought confirmed reports of Hassan's location in the center of Bud Bagsak. Wood ordered troops to move before sunrise the next day. By dawn, the columns of troopers had positioned themselves on the slopes of Mount Bagsak.
Before long, Hassan and two other companions emerged from the crater where they had hidden for their morning personal routine. They were spotted by American sharp sharpshooters who filled two of Hassan's companions, but Hassan was unhurt and immediately slipped back to his hideout. Meanwhile, the encircling troops and their way until all possible exits of Hassan were sealed. Then a sergeant suddenly met Hassan who was trying to crawl out from the crater. The sergeant positioned himself with a cabin to put an end to the Hassan episode. Realizing the inevitable movement had come and possibilities of another escape was nil, Hassan took his baron. The weapon he had perfectly mastered since he saw the first glimpse of conflict. He plunged at the soldier who tried to get at him, but the bullets from the sergeant's Calvin finally ended the career of Sulu's most colorful leader from the masses. When Hassan's body was examined, there were 26 bullet wounds sustained from several encounters. Hassan's death did not did not end the solar resistance. Others were inspired to follow the Panglima's ex exploits. One of these was the renegade Pala, who was who had just returned from an adventure in Borneo, where authority, authorities had been looking for him after a series of murderous robberies associated with him. He organized his own rebel band and defied American rule from 1905 to 1906, but like the earlier leaders, Paula was eliminated and his band destroyed. Besides Paula, there were other local leaders who created problems for American authorities in Hulu Island, where the Taosug resistance was concentrated. Prominent were Datu Osap, Paroka Otik. Salip Mazdal, Maharaja Ontun Jekere, and Akib Amir. They were responsible for making the first American decade in Sulu a time of trial for American wealth and capacity. They were also priests with the help of some thousand leaders, the Sultan Julius Shiap and their allies. While the suppression of these isolated revolts was accomplished by superior American arms the next decade, so the emergence of armed conflicts. The most significant were the Bag Bagsak Affair in 1913 and the Chikari Threat in 1909. Number 3. The Bajau Adibad Dajo. No, guys, all it. Number 3, Bodadjo 1906. In 1906, shortly after the suppression of the Pala uprising, another trouble was brewing as hundreds of Muslims streaked towards the crater of an extinct, of an extinct volcano. Bodadjo located strategically in the northern series of mountain ranges which had figured prominently in past encounters. The and Essenis was caused by a rumor that American intention to, was to wipe out the whole of Muslims. Thus, the trick to the Jew was to become a heroic stand against American rule. Although the American authorities denied the truth of the rumor, it was too late to turn back the tide of a popular feeling that was aggravated by worsening social and economic problems to confront the Muslims was relatively a small contingent of American troops composed na ano ako guys nawala na naman tayo Composed of 65 men from the 6th Infantry, 65 men from the 4th Cavalry, and 130 soldiers from the 28th Mountain Battery. Bodajal was formidable, 
Bad that joke. Ano ba yan? Mali-mali ako ng pasa. Ang liliit kasi, guys. Bad that joke was formidable and strategic. Three small trucks to fit wide lead to the crater measuring about 15 acres. The crater had abundant fresh water and was stocked with food resources. Governor Leonard Wood, who was dealing personally with the problem, admitted that the campaign was difficult because of the natural difficulties created by the geographic character of the area. Muslim barricades of not more than 8 feet along lava ridges below. Along lava ridges and steep precipices. Precipices would make fall ups land on top of trees below. Yun. Wood's strategy was therefore to avoid such hazard hazardous operation by appealing to the defenders to surrender while at the same time preparing the military force. Governor Wood took immediate steps in line with the strategy called Nair Hug W. Scott of the Sambonga Constabulary and Campaign John White were ordered to proceed to Hulu with 50 men. Then prominent leaders of Patikol were top as peace emissaries, Dato Kalbi, Dato Jokanein, and Panglima Bandahala. For two days, the emissaries tried to persuade the defenders to abandon their resistance. On the third day, the emissaries returned to Hulu to report the sad news of their futile mission. So Governor Scott ordered the immediate assault in Dajo. The battle began on March 5, 1906 and lasted up to the morning of March 8. Colonel Duncan was placed in command of the entire operation. Governor Wood gave a last chance for non-combatants to be evacuated but the latter refused. They would rather join their men. The assault was aided by artillery shelling which effectively neutralized. Muslim capacity to inflict damage on American troops. Thus, the Muslims tried to retaliate by feeding us corpses and jumping at the Americans with their crises in barongs when they came at a striking distance. Although this stand was hopeless and the battle one-sided, the Muslims wanted to die with at least an enemy at their side. This kind of fanatical resistance amidst fatal hopelessness honors to colonial troops and earned for the morals their savage enemies in American history. American casualties from the Dajjo battle were 18 killed and 52 wounded, while 600 Muslim recalcitrants in the crater were literally wiped out by mortar and machine gun fires from 800 troopers. Although the field officers deplored the one-sided fight, Governor Wood commended the troops for the successful campaigns and criticized the Sultan for the latter's failure to assist. In the United States, the attacks on Wood for the massacre were vicious and effective. On April 16, 1906, Wood held his last conciliatory conference with Datos and local leaders before turning over the governorship of the Moro province to General Tus Tusker its bliss. The effect of the Daji massacre of the, on the Filipino independence movement was to blunt the Filipino parliamentary struggle in the United States where the anti dependence forces in Congress tried to blow up the Muslim attitude to American rule as an evidence of lack preparedness for self-government. Bukos na yung number 4 guys, Jigari 1907. Bye everyone, God bless.